Just wanna show my appreciation and thank you for not leaving me in the matrix. And praise you cause you are the greatest. All praises by the hundred times a day I say it. Gave the world up for you and I wouldn't trade it. I choose you over earth, you the one that made it. No better God but the one I know. I'm Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 for sure. There. There'll never be a better. All right, so all praise to the Most High. Uh, we bite for another lesson. The, to this week's topic is strength. Now, we could have went a couple of ways with that topic, but the, the way that I'm going with it is, uh, as Israelites, where do we get our strength from? Where do we get our strength from? Um, so I'm going to start off with uh, Syrah, chapter 17, uh, you got the apocrypha? No, I don't got the apocrypha. I got uh, I got one online here, but it don't. I don't think it has Sirach. Okay, Thomas, you got your apocrypha. It'll be uh, it'll be under Ecclesiasticus. Yeah, Ecclesiasticus. That's the name of it. Okay, I got you. Yep. All right, All right read uh, seventeen, eleven, and twelve. I'll be forgetting about that. Uh. That uh, Ecclesiasticus, because I always say Sirach, so that's on me. Yeah. Um, hold on a second, let me pull it up. No, I don't think it's, it's, yeah, I don't think it's on here. Let me see here. All right. You said 17. Yeah. Okay. It ain't got it in here. All right. I, 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 I'll read it. The book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 17 and 11 and 12. And it says, Hold on, I, I got it. I got it. You I, said 17? I, yeah. yeah, I pulled it up. All right, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, the book of Ecl Ecclesiasticus, uh, chapter what's it, 17. Uh -huh. What we want to start at? Ver uh, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an, for an heritage. He made an ever, everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. Now, the, the them in that verse is talking about the children of Israel. So our power and our strength is um, the most high. Now, we can drop the mic right there. We can keep going, but we're going to keep right. going to this lesson. So our power and strength come from the most high. And and the power that they give us is in that covenant, these laws, statutes, and commandments. So if you want power, you got to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Somebody grab me Psalms 111 and 10. Psalms 111 and 10. All right. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Mm-hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. So your power comes from keeping his commandments. You know, like uh, back in the day, we used to watch uh, Popeye. Yeah. That cartoon Popeye. His power came from eating spinach. Spinach. Our power comes from keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. So in the sense, you can say that's our spinach. These laws, statutes, and commandments. Not uh, anything else. And our power doesn't come from us. It comes from the Most High God. Because like we always say, we are only vessels to the Most High God. We are filthy rags. Well, we can't get puffed up with this power and knowledge. Don't let that get you puffed up because the Most High God will bring you low. All right. So let's go to the book of... Uh, I was going to get the definition of strength okay so the definition of strength is hold on, I had it here for a second. strength uh the definition of strength is the state or quality of being strong physical power or capacity the strength needed to live the the, the capacity to resist attack impregnable the strength of a ship's armor, 
the capacity to resist strain or stress, durability, strength, and of capabilities. And a lot of times we like to look at strength as physical, right? But a lot we have to have we have to have uh, mental strength as well. Because give me First Timothy chapter four, four and verse eight. First Timothy chapter four, verse eight. A lot of times we look at we look at strength as just physical, but no, it takes more mental strength to make it through a lot of situations than physical strength, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, you got that? Yeah, I got that. Uh, First Timothy chapter four, verse eight. Mm -hmm. For bodily exercise, profiteth little, profiteth little, but godliness mm -hmm. is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So boom, bodily exercise. Now we know we have, we need to, it is good to exercise our bodies. Lord knows I know that right about now, but it profit little. Because if we go back to the story of David, right? David and Goliath. Goliath was this yeah, big yeah. behemoth giant, probably had all these big muscles. And David was a little small man, but who won that battle? Mm. Right? David did. A lot of times you we we see big physical specimens of people and people be more it's more about intimidation. We can't get be intimidated by somebody's size because a lot of times a lot of times it's just that size and intimidation. There's nothing behind that. Like you see those big dogs behind fences barking and barking. But when you open that fence, what they do? They run with their <laughs> tails tucked. Now I'm not saying all the time. Yep. But a lot of times it's all bark and no bite. So we have to have that mm -hmm. mental, that mental strength. All right. So I'm going to read Psalms 147 and 10. It says, the light, uh, the most high delight, not in the strength of horses. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of men. So again, the most high God doesn't take pleasure. He gives us our power and our strength, but he and that's why when I be watching these videos and I like to say that uh, when they talk about us Israelites, our fellow Israelite brothers and sisters bringing out these classes, they always go and say that we stronger, we run faster, we jump higher. That makes me cringe. We yeah. do it. That makes me cringe when I'm walking, watching these videos because you say, you know, you saying our, our most uh, dominant attribute is physical. It's physical. No, our most our most dominant attribute is these is this mind that most high God gave us. That's our most dominant attribute that we have. That we we are the creators of, of math, science, and all these other and all these other things, all these other inventions. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. But the first mm. thing our people like to like to like to show is physical strength, physical prowess. Oh, we jump high, we can slam a basketball. Well, you eat number the monkey. You know what I'm right. saying? All you saying is you just uh entertainer. Right. Oh, it is more to us than running and jumping. Right? Yeah, yeah. The our, mind. The mind. That mind, our minds is powerful. But if you've been raised your whole life to say that the hey, only, <laughs> only way that you can get out of the hood is running and jumping, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because you can use that as a key to get a, a scholarship, to get a college of education. So there's nothing wrong with that. You got to use what you got to get where you need to go. I'm not right. that bad, But we come here, we are the full package. Yeah. And you don't want to leave everything on the okay. table. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to leave anything on the table. You know, God gives us this all of this ability to complete package, but you only mm -hmm. using 10%. Exactly. Right? And mm -hmm. the other 99%, you know, is in your God, the godliness that was referred to in that verse, mm -hmm. you know, following those those uh, statutes and commandments. That's right. You're not going to be able to run as far as you think you will. Exactly. Exactly. Jerry, you want to you want to open up with something? Um, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter one. All right. I got it. The book of First Corinthians chapter one. And starting at verse 24. All right. 
First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Verse 26, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But, I'm um, verse 27, but the most high have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and the most high have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. So with us talking about strength, mm -hmm. we get uh, plenty of examples in the Bible that all this strength that we're talking about is not ours. It's not man's strength. It's mm -hmm. the strength that the Most High gives us through his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, Samson is an example. Huh. He, had, he had strength. But was it his own? No, because when Delilah cut them locks and he thought he was going to get up just like he did all those previous times mm -hmm. and take those Philistines down. But he didn't know that the Holy Spirit had left him. Mm. So that was his power. Mm. Or we, I had another example and it escapes me. Hey, 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 you, uh, hold on, hold on real quick on that example that you just used. When you said that... Uh, we said that uh, the Holy Spirit had left him, right? Yeah. And the reason that the Holy Spirit left him, well, what, why, why, why would you say the Holy Spirit left? Because uh, for one, he was in sin. Boom. Perfect. All right. That's point blank right there. All right. Let me read something real quick in uh, the book of Wisdom and so Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and verse four. It says, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in a body that is subject unto sin. For the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit of discipline will flee to see and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Mm. So, yeah, that just backs up everything that uh, was just stated. This mm -hmm. all this strength that we're gonna be talking about tonight is not ours. It oh. does not originate with us. It it originates with the Most High, with His Holy Spirit. Once we are obedient to His words, mm -hmm. and as always, like what we say, keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, because just like it says in Scripture, that's our righteousness. It's also our strength. Con, con. So let's go to. Um... Let's go to the book of. Oh, you oh you was going somewhere else, uh, Jerry? Uh, no, just stating. Well, looking at verse twenty-seven, it okay. says God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Uh, my example just came back to me when you, you take look over? at <laughs> when you look at on uh, the back, the back, go that way. Hey, Bird, Bird, put yours on mute. Huh? Go ahead. Huh? Okay. When we look at uh, these so-called black guys on these three corners every Saturday, okay, even if you take IUIC as the as the better example, okay, everybody's uniform, you got that purple on, but still yet, even with that, all of these guys look like rat, what you would call ragamuffins. Where you ain't packing nothing. Where is your strength? And you guys are supposed to be mighty. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't appear like that because what we just read, God has chosen the weak things of the world. That's why when we do come into our salvation and the heathens are going to see it, they're going to be amazed. Yeah. You mean this? Mm hmm. Is God's chosen people, these people? So again, it's not us. It doesn't originate with us. Mm -hmm. It flows through us once we mm -hmm. are obedient to his word, obedient to his law, statutes, and commandments. And then that's where our strength kicks in. Kind. 
Let's grab uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 through 5. Verses 4 and 5. Uh huh. Okay, and, it says. Oh, hold on. And then somebody grab uh, 1 Samuel 17. 45, I think it is. Go ahead. Huh? Okay. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse four, mm -hmm. for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Huh. So again, like you were just saying, uh, when they see us out there, we don't have any weapons. Like I remember this was this one time we was in, we was on the highways of hedges in, in West Tampa on Main Street. And this Muslim guy came up on us, right? And he was like, Where y'all guns at? Where y'all weapons at? Y'all can't take nothing over. I'm like, we don't need no <laughs> weapons. We got the most high. That's our power. And, and you know, he was just going on and on how we ain't got no AKs and Muslims blowing up stuff and I said, that, okay, this y'all kingdom. Why would we fight for this kingdom right here anyway? Like Christ said, if this was his kingdom, he would fight for it. So while we fight for this kingdom, it's not time for us to, to fight. And, and even when we do, the, the weapons that's in this earth right now is not what the Most High God is going to give us to use in that day. All right. Uh, somebody got uh, 1 Samuel 17 and 45. 45. Yeah, 45. Yeah, so 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, verse 45. Mm -hmm. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Mm -hmm. This that day... Was that was it. That was it. So okay. again... They come at us with what? The sword and the shield, but we not coming with nothing. We got the most high behind us. That's who our power is. That's what our strength is. Somebody get one more uh, before we go forward. Uh, Exodus, I think it's 13, 13. And before we move on to that, that story with David and Goliath, if you uh, remember preceding that, Saul was trying to give uh, David some armor. Man, you're going up against this Goliath. Here, put this armor on. And it didn't work for him. Right. Exactly. It didn't yep. work for him at all. So again, uh, the foolish things. Because who would think, first of all, David was a, a teenager. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, what you got in your hand? I got these five smooth stones. Mm-hmm. And when I knock you out, I'm going to take your sword and then I'm going to chop your head off with it. That's right. That's right. So that's what we got to remember. It, it was uh, Exodus 14, 14. Exodus 14, 14. Thomas, how you doing this evening? Huh? How you doing this evening? Been running around as usual, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. Oh, praise is glad to see you can make you it. Know, I'm not going to lie. You you called me just in time. <laughs> I appreciate that call, too, man. That's why, that's why I try to do that, everybody, before we start. You know, because I know sometimes time can get a time and slip away from yeah, yeah. time be moving. I don't know what to do, boy. Yeah. I got you did. <laughs> oh, you got it? I got that. Yep. Uh, so Exodus 14, chapter 14, uh -huh. verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Hmm. That's there, there it is again. The most high God will fight for us. He's our strength, and we shall hold our peace. Now, the only way that the most high God is going to fight for you is by you being obedient. Because if you're not obedient and you have things coming against you, that's the most high God sending that stuff on you. You know what I'm saying? So how is he gonna play? You know what I'm saying? How are you gonna play both sides? If he if you're not with God, he's not protecting you. He's letting he's letting the devil have his will with you, have his way with you. All right, you got also, some there. Go also with that obedience, uh patience is built into that. 
mm-hmm. because again, uh, the most high de- and he even states it that my ways are not your way. Mm. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Right. So the way the most high does things, it's uh, well, it can be a uh, lack of a better word, confusing to the natural mind mm-hmm. because it doesn't make sense. So we got to be patient and wait on the most high to do things the way he do things. Mm. All right. All right. Let's go to um, Isaiah. No, slack it. First Corinthians 16 and 13. Yeah, first Corinthians okay, 16 and 13. I had, oh no, that's Chronicles. I have written down. Right, you first Corinthians. Yeah, 16, 13. First Corinthians 16. <clears throat> uh Ernest, grab um uh, Isaiah 40, 29. You got that one, uh Jerry. Yeah. All right. First Corinthians 16, verse 13 and 14. Yeah. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Mm. Be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Mm. Let all everything be done in love. But he said, be like men. Have strength. We can't be folding up when there's time of in times of adversity. And we have to have that, like uh, we just read in Wisdom of Solomon, uh, discipline. It takes discipline to uh, walk this walk, just like the military. It takes a lot of discipline. And a lot of times we see things not going our way, especially in this microwave society that we live in today. We want, we want the results now. Most High God don't work on that time schedule. Most High God does not work on that schedule. Look at all the example of Noah. He prophesied for 120 years, yeah, 120 yeah, yeah. years. Look how long we've been in this captivity for 400 years. And ever since I was young, my mom even said the other day, my mom said, you ain't been talking about Jesus coming back since I was a little girl. Okay. But he said, here are the patience and the faith of the saints. If you got faith, I mean, patience, you got to have faith. If you got faith, you're going to have patience. If you don't believe that, then why you even have a Bible? God ain't working on our time. He's working on his time. And just like in the day, just like biking was in the in the in our wilderness, a lot of people, most of the majority of people, over the over only eight people walked, only how many people walked into the promised land? Two. Two, two from the original cast. Two people from the original. So again. Most high God just be sitting here waiting for us to fall off like flies. See what your strength is. Do you have strength to endure? That book says those that shall endure. It takes strength to endure trials and tribulations that we're going through in this life. But it says those that shall endure until the end, not halfway through. You know what I'm saying? Not a quarter way through, but all the way through the process. Those that shall endure to the end, and those that shall though those that shall be saved that shall endure to the end. Also, right. what's built into that we got to take in consideration because it's uh, it's documented or stated from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. The most I ain't worried about large numbers. He dealing right. small numbers. He's, he's, yeah. Ooh, let me grab right. that real quick. Let me grab that. That's uh, uh, Matthew seven fourteen. Is it? You can also go get in on that one. Yeah, yeah, that's who I was thinking of as well. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Matthew 7, start at uh, 13. Start at 13. Small numbers. Hmm. Matthew 7. Yeah. 13. Yeah. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in threat there. So, so stop right there. Uh, so it said broad is the way to destruction. And many be there that go in that. Many people going to go that way, the broad way, following the, the trends, following what's popular, following society 
following the world. Uh, uh, Thomas, grab James 4 and 4 real quick. Following the world. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I was telling my kids the other day in our uh, Sabbath lesson, lesson about popularity. We raising leaders. We're not raising uh, followers up, up in hell, up in Israel. So we raising leaders. And when you see all these, uh, what they call them, TikTok videos and, and such challenge and all these different challenges. And I see when they were lighting each other on some kind of challenge, they were lighting each other on fire and all this dumb stuff. I'm like, come on, that's a follower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a follower that we, man, you, I, I don't know what these kids uh, eating, what's in the food, all these GMOs that make you want to set yourself on fire for some likes on Facebook or uh, what's Instagram or whatever they're doing. But it's ridiculous. Thomas, you got that? That was James. James, what? James chapter four and verse four. James chapter 4 verse 4 mm -hmm. ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the <clears throat> friendship of the world in, in, in mm -hmm. with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the most high so boom that goes back to what we were just reading in Matthew 7 and 14 Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to, to the destruction, and many there be which go therein. All right, keep going up. Verse 14. Hey, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Verse 14. Uh, Matthew 7, 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that which lead unto life and few there be that find it. So again, it's not going to be many people that find it. So if you see everybody doing something, the majority of people doing something, the popularity contest, that means get away from that. That, that means get away from it. And as you see that it's not many of us, uh, all of us are like two so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, but not all of us are awake. So when you see what the majority of our people are doing with these mega churches or Islam got two billion, such and such billions of followers throughout the world, you know that that's not it. You know that what we're doing, not too many right. people are doing. So it's got to be right. It's yeah. According to scripture. According, according to scripture. According to scripture. And we're going to let God's word be true and let every man be a liar. I don't want to be in no mega church. <laughs> it got too many of y'all in one group anyway at one time. No, no. In military, they, they teach us not to be all lumped up together at one time, right? They had us spread out. So if a bomb do drop, they ain't going to get us all. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, you got something, Jerry? Uh, let's go to um, Second Corinthians. Okay. 12 and 9. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, 12 and verse 9. Yeah. All right. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than, I mean, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hmm. So again, like we've just been stating, this strength that we're talking about tonight, it doesn't originate with us. Mm -hmm. We are weak vessels. We are earthen vessels. There's no power in us that originates with us. Everything right. that we have comes from and through the Most High, through his Holy Spirit. And this is where God gets his glory. Because mm -hmm. it uh, where's that scripture that said, if you knew this beforehand, uh, it's in Isaiah, I believe it is. But we would be bragging that it's it's all, all us. Yeah. But we have no room to boast. And that takes us to... Uh, Let's go to Zechariah, I think it is. Yeah, Zechariah 4 and 6. Okay, why y'all go that one? To go backwards in that one you were just reading. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 6. 
No, I'm going to start at um, verse 5. It says, of such and one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. For now I forbear least any man should think of me above that which he saith me to be or that he heareth of me. So what Paul was speaking of right there, uh, remember he said, I'm the Hebrews of all Hebrews, right? Mm -hmm. But he had an infirmity, which that uh, that was a, a what they call it, a thorn in the side, right? Mm -hmm. So the most high God is going to put, like a lot of times people like to say when you have an ailment or something, oh, that's God dealing with you. He, he's uh, punishing you. But no, that's the most high God keeping you humble and letting other yeah. people see that you are just human too. So they won't yeah. think of you above. And that's why Christ came in, in human flesh. It says I in the book of Galatians. Is that what you was going to right now? He, it, it behooved him to be made to like his brethren. So we don't look like we're better or like we Superman or we powerful because we are setting examples showing our brothers and sisters that the same people y'all are, we are too. If I can make it through this walk with these infirmities, with these ailments, you can do it too. And with that being said, when we look at all of the patriarchs, uh, Abraham, uh, David, uh, Saul, all of them, not only does the Mosai tell us what they did great, but he keeps it balanced. Keep it balanced. David, thou art the man. Mm -hmm. Abraham, you shouldn't have listened to your wife at that point in time. So they 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 made mistakes. Yeah. And, and let me finish that uh, verse seven. This this is what the meat was. And least I should and least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I should be exalted above measure. So again. No matter how long we've been in this walk, you are always going to be buff. Satan going to always be at you. Satan was at Christ. Satan was at Christ. As a thorn in the side, he's going to always have some affliction. We still have to show and prove every day that we wake up, regardless how much you read this Bible, no matter how much you, you keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you got your fringes, you got your beard, you keep it on high holidays, but it only takes one weak moment to slip, and put, that's all the enemy waiting for. So we got to stay on our um, on our P's and Q's and we got to stay prayed up and realize that we're not perfect. So when we do have this knowledge, don't get puffed up. Because that's when it gets you. When you get big headed, that's when it gets you. I yeah, got something. Like I said, that, go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? I was, I was going to go to um, Ephesians 6, starting at uh, verse 10. All right. I got you. Oh, I had that one very good. Ephesians chapter uh, Ephesians chapter six, six verse, ten. Verse ten. All right. Ten, yeah. It says, "Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Most High, and in the power of His might." Hmm. Our might. His might. His might. Mm -hmm. And what about the pastor's know? might? Right. Might. <laughs> and you know what? You know, I was just over there, and I think that was uh, numbers when uh, I think it was Moses sent the spies out to the land, mm -hmm. came back, and the people was mumbling about, "Hey, you know, if we attack these people, they tall, they strong, they all of this right here, mm -hmm. right?" And then you had those who were like, "No, if the Lord is pleased with us, He will allow us to go into this land. Mm -hmm. His strength." You know, yeah. that ties in right here with this here, you know, like I said, with this, uh, that specific chapter, that of uh, us, specific, specific verse that, you know, his might, man, that's, that's, that's our strength. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can't uh, get the big head. Can't get the big head. And then like you were just saying, I'm going to read Psalms 31, 24. It said, be of good courage and he, sh and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye mm -hmm. that hope in thy power. Remember, we read last time, those that have faith, hope in his power, the most high God's power. And your heart is your mind. You got to uh, uh, you got to have your mind right dealing with the most high God and have hope in his power. Uh, Psalms 118 and 8. It is better to trust in the most high than that than to put confidence in men. 
And and that and that ties in great with this society we live in now, when they think that voting is going to do anything for our people. And they think hmm. that protesting is going to do anything for our people. And they think yeah. that rioting should do anything for our people. Vandalizing, none of that's going to work. None of that's going to work because when we when in, in, in Egypt, the Bible says, and the children of Israel cried to the Most High. They cried to the Most High. They didn't cry to Pharaoh. You know what I'm saying? They didn't cry to the Romans when we was in our, in our Judea. They cried to the Most High. And he delivered them from their afflictions. Right? He delivered us from our afflictions. So voting, I don't know. The, the, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and over again. And expecting a different outcome. But <laughs> why would they change their tactic when every four years they get? I guess they put that that sorcery on our people, and they think that voting gonna go out and voting gonna change. Oh, this is the most important voting. This is the important, the most important vote of our lifetime. They say that every four years. Yeah, they yeah. say that every four years. And next four years they're gonna be saying it again. They're gonna vilify. They vilify Trump and put Biden in there. But if our people did any research on Biden, he couldn't stand black people. And he voted, what, what was that uh, That civil crime rights bill? bill? The crime, the crime bill. bill. Yeah. But, oh, but see, we don't see what they do. They vilify, they vilify one and give you the other one. And a lot of people like to say, well, I'm going to take the lesser two evils. No, you're not supposed to take no evil. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> not supposed to take any evil. Rebuke <laughs> both of them. Rebuke uh, both done. of them. Be done right. with it's uh, the right wing, left wing, both attached to the same dirty bird. I don't know. I don't know why we don't get it. But you got something, Jerry? Yeah, that's Zechariah 4 and 6. All right, I got it. The book of Zechariah. Give me one second. <clears throat> Zechariah, oh, I got right. 4 and 6. Yeah. All right, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Most High unto Zerubbabel, 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 saying, Not by my, like it, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, say of the Most High God of hosts. So Keep again, on. there's might okay. in that power. Oh, you're going to read. Okay, go ahead. Read that too. All right. Verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel. Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone, thereof with shouting, crying grace, grace unto it. Okay, okay, so again, so again that might and that power, it doesn't belong to us. Mm -hmm. It's by his spirit, said the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's where our strength comes from, point blank. Point blank. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, bring out that uh, what uh, that, that Isaiah 40 and 31. All right. So, uh, yeah, 40, 31? Yeah. All right, I got it. The Talking book. about this. This power, this might, it, 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 I, you know, I like to think of it as a an everlasting, uh, infinite source of strength, mm -hmm. a well that we can just draw from anytime we want. Mm -hmm. It's there. Yeah. It's there. So we bring that out. Uh, that, right. Isaiah 4 and 31. Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Most High shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they mm -hmm. shall walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm, I, want, I want to give another example of uh, the strength that the Most High God gives us. And we have to remember that the Most High God himself isn't coming out of heaven. He have angels to do his work for him. So let's go to the book of Zerat, um, what's that? Um, Zechariah chapter two and verse, start at verse one. Hey, Thomas, you grab Second Kings 6 and 16. All right. I got uh, yeah. Zechariah. Uh-huh. 
chapter uh, two. Right. Yes, yeah, it started at verse one. Verse starting at verse one. Mm -hmm. I lifted up my eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, Whether whither <laughs> goest thou? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem to see what is the breadth of it there, thereof, and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him, and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns within walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. All right, stop right there. So it says Jerusalem shall be inherited, I mean, inhabited as towns without walls. So what this is speaking of was a future prophecy when we will be in the wilderness again. So we're going to be out there without walls or without protection, right? Then it says for, I, um, for, the, uh, for the multitude of men and cattle therein. So what that is saying, though, even though we're, we will be in the wilderness, Most High God is still going to provide. That's what the cattle is, most of the cattle. All right, keep going. For I, said the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire around about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. All right, stop right there. So again, it says, and I, when we in the wilderness, there will be no cities, no walls, no protection. We're going to be out in the open. But God said, but he will be unto her a wall of of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. So remember, when uh, when two or more gather, most high is in the midst, right? All right, uh, Thomas, get that Second Kings 6 and 16. So what we need to find out is what does that, what is that it means, what does it mean when it says a wall of fire round about? What does that mean? All right, you got that up? Second Kings 6 verse 16. Oh, hold on, let me go up in this story, so um now what this is talking about it was this uh army get ready to attack right so go to verse 14 verse 14 yeah second king 6 verse 14 yeah therefore sent he <clears throat> by their horses and chariots and a great host and they came by night and come past the city about. Mm -hmm. When the servant of the man of the Most High was risen early and gone forth, behold, <clears throat> and hope come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So he was like, dang, this, this, uh, these chariots, this army have surrounded us. What are we going to do? He was worried, right? Keep going. And he answered, fear not. Fear for not. They, mm -hmm. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So he said, mm -hmm. they that be with us are more. You see this army surrounding us? Man, the people we got uh, backing us up is more to be with them. All right, keep going. And Elijah prayed. And said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. That remember, he remember, Christ said, blessed are those with eyes to see. A lot of us can see carnal, physical things, but you have to have that real spiritual eye to see spiritual things. See, so the young man couldn't see. But Elijah prayed to God that so he can see the next realm, that spiritual realm. Because remember, uh, the Bible said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against spirits, prin uh, uh, principalities, and high places. All right, go ahead. Huh? <laughs> and the Most High opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountains, <clears throat> the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. So remember what we just read in Zechariah. Uh, the Most High God shall be a wall of fire round about. That's our strength. He's going to have his angels around us protecting us. We don't have to get no AK-47s. We don't have to have no B-2 B two bombers. We don't have to have none of that. The Most High God got us as long 
as we keep in these laws, statutes, and commandments, because there's nothing that the so-called white man of these other nations can do to come up to, to defeat him. We just have to believe that. We just have to believe. Even though we can't see it, we can feel it. We see that, yeah. that, that sun come up every day, we know that there's a power. That sun ain't burned out. That sun have not burnt out in how many years? That moon comes up on time, the same time every month on this on the cycle. The sun goes on the cycle. There's no there's no way in the world that if all this came was created from a big boom, have that to stay in perfect concert year after year, day after day, minute after minute. That ain't none but the most high God. Yep, all in heart. Um Psalms 34 and 7 goes with what you just stated about those angels in that that firewall. All right, Psalm 34 and 7. Yeah. I got it. The book of Psalms, chapter 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Most High encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Mm. Mm. That fear him. Fear. You have to fear God. That's how he's going. Because if you don't fear him, that means you feel like you can you can uh, take care of yourself, right? I don't need God. I don't fear him. Okay, so he's going to open that gate <laughs> and let the enemy have at you. That's what he's going to do. Um, let's get uh, Isaiah 41.10. So, yeah, so our strength, yeah, I know we can lift weights and we can eat healthy. That's all part of strength. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with eating healthy. We, we need to eat healthy because God gave us a dietary law that we must keep our temples healthy because these temples do, do not belong to us. They are just rentals from the most high God. And if you keep it clean and when you go turn it in, he's going to give you an upgrade, right? Come so on. we have to keep our temples clean. We have to fear the most high God. We have to stay exercised up to keep these bodies going so we can make it across the finish line. But it's not the end all be all. And that's not the number one thing that we must be uh, have our Focus mind on, on strength. Focus yep. on. Exactly. I, I got it. All right, go ahead. Uh, Isaiah chapter 41, mm -hmm. verse 10. Yep. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. There's always a stipulation, though. Righteousness. Yep. It has to be righteous. God cannot bless a mess. You have to be righteous for him to strengthen you. So it all will always comes back to the law. Um... You got something, Jerry? I was trying to find that scripture where you were just talking about uh, how we eat, and that's all part of it. But that's not that's not the main thing. It's then the rock. Uh, I'm still looking. All right. Well, are you looking for that? Let's go to uh, Luke chapter ten. Uh, start at verse one. All praises to the most high. He is our strength. He is our power. He is our buck, shield, and buckler. All right. Um, the book of Luke, chapter 5? No, chapter 10. Chapter 10? Mm-hmm. That's what it is. 10. Okay. Oh. Verse 5, we'll start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. 
Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, the uh, part of being a laborer is you need strength. Now, this is not talking about physical strength again. It's talking about spiritual strength. Because a lot of times when we go out on the highways and hedges and we bring this word out to our people, we're not doing anything physically, but we're doing a lot of stuff mentally. And a lot of times when you leave from out there, you are mentally drained from battle, you battling spirits out there, spirits on these people, not physically, but mentally. So that that that's why you, you that's why that's that's why it's called being a laborer out there. All right, keep going up. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor script nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Mm -hmm. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. Mm -hmm. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. Mm -hmm. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborers is worthy of his hire. Mm -hmm. Go not from house to house. All right, stop right. That one make a little side note on that, on that right there. Where it says, go not from house to house. That lets you know them, them Jehovah Witnesses, and they be <laughs> going knocking on <laughs> Door to door, the book says, go not house to house. And I brought that out to one of them when he came to my house, locked my door. I said, hold on. The book says, you're not supposed to be doing this. He said, show me. And I showed him the scripture right here. And he just turned, tucked his tail and walked away. But yeah, that means he didn't take correction. He went, because he went right next door and knocked on their door. <laughs> so it says, go not, go not house to house. All right, keep going up. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, each eat such things as are sent before you mm -hmm. and heal the sick that are therein mm -hmm. and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Now, that's not now that's the main message that we supposed to be given to our people. We supposed to let them know who they are and that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which means playtime is over. Playtime is over. It's coming. All this that we've been out here doing. Playtime is over. It's time to get right, get your houses in order. All right, keep going. And when it says get your house in order, it means get your temple in order and your house, like your family. Get that in order. Especially if you're yep. the head of the house as the man, because it's going to all fall on you in the end. Yep. All right, keep going. On. But into whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. I right, stop right there. So when we go out and we bring this word, this this part of our strength. A lot of times we get um we don't have thick skin. We tend to get we tend to get take these things personal when people come against us when we bring them God's word. No, he said, "Dust your feet, and it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and um for Sodom than for that city or that person or that household." All right, jump to verse sixteen up. Huh? Verse sixteen. He that heareth you heareth me, mm. and he that despiseth you despiseth me, and he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. Mm. And, the, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. No, through my name. Nope, through thy yeah. name. So we get our strength. Even the devils are subject to you through Christ's name, through that power. And we know that Christ gave his power from the Father up on high. All right, jump to verse 19. 19. Behold, 
I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions mm -hmm. and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall be, <clears throat> and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So there you go again. You say, yeah, the, the serpents and all the wickedness, they are in subjection unto you. But don't get the big head. Don't get don't get puffed up. Right. A lot of people get, a lot of people get that sword and just want to cut, cut. No, don't get the big head. Don't get the big head. Be more happy that your name is written in heaven. Be more happy that God chose to wake you up. But it says, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. So be sure to make your calling of election sure. Cause you can you can write your name right out of that book with all this knowledge. Uh, uh, Father, uh, so did didn't I didn't I uh, cast out devils in your name? Yeah, you I never knew you. You got the big head. You got puffed up with pride. That 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 spirit cannot um cannot it don't mesh with the Most High God spirit because Christ on his deathbed said what. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgive them. That's the kind of spirit he had. Not, hey, I want to see their head chopped off. And my daughters, they was watching this, this, uh, this cartoon as a Bible cartoon. And it was just about that. Uh, one of the guys wanted God to, talk about Jonah. Wanted him, Jonah wanted God to kill everybody in Nibia because they was all wicked. But no, God showed them mercy. God show all of us mercy. So that's the same mercy and same spirit that we have to have because Lord knows the, the scripture says, if he have, if he have uh, done to us as we deserve, we all supposed to be dead. And we're not, uh, even, even our enemies, we're not supposed to rejoice in our enemies fall. We're not supposed to do that. Cause that could have easily been us by God's grace and mercy. He didn't destroy us, totally yeah. destroy us. Cause I know I've done some things in my life. That I should be out of here. So I ain't going to never rejoice over somebody else's folly. All right, go yeah, ahead. Okay. What you going to say? No, I was just going to say, like you said, um, it just could have easily been us. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say just as easy it could have been us, if we don't keep those statutes and commandments, it's many mm -hmm. times, well, you know, uh, the father just said that, you know, if you don't keep this, I'm going to do unto you what I was going to do to him. Exactly. And so you got to come correct, man, and get it right the first time. Exactly. Or or, or if you don't get it right the first time, just acknowledge um your fault, your shortcoming, and just repent. Don't be don't be proud. Yeah. Hey, I messed up. Yeah. We all mess up. The the, yeah. the 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 issue isn't messing up, it's the, the issue is not learning from your mistakes. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's it's a part of the it's a part of the journey, you know. That refinement, you know, like you said, like we talked about before about being unto pure gold, mm -hmm. right? Getting those impurities out, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to. Uh, Matthew 7 and 6. Matthew 7 and 6. So, but a lot of times, like we were just re reading in the book of Luke, where it says, if they don't want to be bothered, why are you sitting there going back and forth with them? That's because that pride is kicked in. No, y'all gonna you gonna understand what I'm I'm gonna make you understand yep. this. No, you can't make yep. you understand nothing. <laughs> Only thing you're doing is giving you uh that uh read that uh Matthew 7 and 6. Matthew 7 and 6. Mm -hmm. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, mm -hmm. neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Mm -hmm. So, ask, see, nah. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, verse 7 ask and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you oh. for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Mm. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, 
how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Now, it takes a lot of strength. To, it takes that that goes to that mental strength again. It's not talking about physical strength. It's talking about mental strength to, to have the even somebody that don't like you to still want good for that person. Somebody that double cross you to still want good for that person. That takes a lot of mental strength to do that. You got it up. You got something, Jerry? Oh, well, that scripture that I was talking about when we were talking about uh, the food and everything mm -hmm. is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 26. All right, I got it. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 26. And it reads, that thy children, that thy children, oh, father, oh, Oh, that thy children, O oh, Most High, whom thou lovest, might know that it is not the growing of fruits that nourish man, that nourisheth man, but that it is thy word which preserveth them that put their trust in thee. For that which was not destroyed of the fire being warmed with a little sunbeam soon melted away. Want me to keep going? Okay. No, that's good. Okay. So basically what we were stating with that um, statement that you had made, exercise is good, eating right is good, and all of that has its place, but that's not the main thing. Mm -hmm. That's not where our strength is coming from. Again, we keep talking about, and we're talking about strength. Where does our strength come from? Hmm. You got it backwards. Yeah. Boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me see uh, if I can uh, lift this 150 pound bar. <laughs> Do a couple of reps. Right. <laughs> Work on my biceps and my triceps. Yes, Lord. Yeah, man. So yeah, so we got to realize that our strength comes from the most high God. This is another scripture I was looking for where it says, uh, <clears throat> and give not thy strength to another nation. Like how we like to do, mm -hmm. we like to give our power to, first, it, it's the scripture says, give not thy strength unto the woman. And then it says, give not thy strength unto another nation, which means we trying to give our glory to these other nations. We trying to say everybody can get in the kingdom. No, 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 no. Everybody can't get in the kingdom. Everybody don't get the covenant. Everybody didn't get the covenant. Uh, grab that uh, real quick, Thomas. Romans chapter nine, verse one. Because if that was the case, then why are you not going through these curses? It, it's certain things, certain criteria that we got to pass to get through just to make it into the kingdom. How are they going to have this kingdom in the next? So that's why God said, give not thy strength unto another nation. And our strength is the most high God. So a lot of times when our people like to say color don't matter, well, he put it in the book. Our strength is our children said our power looks just like us. Like when we was growing up on we was growing up, I don't know how old you fellas are, but when I was growing up, when you finally seen a black person on TV doing something, it was it was some it was it was something spectacular Indeed. to see. Somebody's doing something positive. So we we fast forward that now to this book. When you see that God looks like you, the Messiah looks like you, all these prophets look like you. Why would you say that color doesn't matter? You're giving your strength to another nation to appease mm. and make somebody else feel comfortable. Feel better, my, yeah. My job is not to make them feel comfortable. My job is to speak the truth of this Bible. My job is not to make my people feel comfortable. My job is not to make even myself feel comfortable. It's, you know what I'm saying? Especially if it's going against the word. I'm not supposed to be comfortable. I'm supposed to be uncomfortable so I can change Trouble. and get right aligned with this book because if you're comfortable, you're never going to try to change. If our children are comfortable with seeing a white Messiah, they will never see pride in themselves because everything they see, white is right and black is bad. But no, I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying that uh, all of our people are good. But if you see our power looks like you, that'll give you some kind of um, some kind of uh, incentive. Incentive. 
and since, inspiration. Inspiration. Will yeah. Yeah, give you incentives and inspiration. Will. Like the example they try to use with Barack Obama. We know he's not of us, but they would still say, hey, he was a black man and he made to, to be the president. You can do it too. You know what I'm saying? Our power is black. He, you, he is our father. He loves you. You not a nigga. And he expects certain things of you. If I grew up in a house full of lawyers, I'm going to expire to be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever. If I grew up in a house full of drug dealers, more than likely, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be what my environment, my environment portrays to me. So if, I, if we tell our children that we gods, they kings, and the most high God is our father, the God of the heaven and earth, that is something to, um, that is something special to our kids. Somebody got some, somebody uh, bringing out something? Uh, we can go to First Chronicles 16. Bring it out. Let me get ready to close it out. First Chronicles 16. You got it, Thomas. Oh, is that a uh, Romans nine and one? Yeah. Oh, it's Saki. Yeah, bring it out real quick. Bring it out real quick. All right. Romans chapter nine, verse one. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, and that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Keep going? Yeah, keep going. Verse 3, for I could wish that myself were accursed a from Christ for my brethren, mm -hmm. my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High? And the promises. All right, stop right there. So right there, a lot of our people will, will want to give that away. <clears throat> they want to give away the covenant. They want to give away uh, the glory. They want to give away the law. But God said, whose are the Israelites to whom pertain it? Which means this is these laws pertain to this people. You can't give away something that was never yours. Like God gave it to you, but you can't give it to somebody else. You can't give it. It was given to the Israelites. That's your power. That's your strength. These laws, statutes, and commandments, and the Most High God. So how could you give your strength to somebody else? Why would you want to give your strength to somebody else? We the only people on the face of the earth that does that. Our people. And that's called low self-esteem. We, we want to invite everybody to this big tent when you was never invited into their tent. It was exclusive. This is exclusive. Exclusive. It's cute, exclusive blood, right? Exclusive. And, and that is something uh, to be proud of. You know what I'm saying? That is something that everybody is not an Israelite. It is by blood. There's no such thing as a spiritual Israelite. There's no such thing as other nations going to be grafted in. It's none of that. Those are all Jewish fables, <laughs> right? Those are Jewish fables. And you can't be grafted in. You can't join. It's not... Uh, Christianity or Baptist. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Baptist this week and Pentecostal next week. No, you Israelite. Even some of those videos I see where people say, why I'm no longer an Israelite? That's the most asinine, dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. <laughs> That's like they're like a Chinese person saying, well, I'm no longer Chinese. Well, your eyes uh, still slanted. So, you know what I'm saying? You are what you are, <laughs> right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> you can't unslant the eyes. <laughs> it's it's like a, a, a pig <laughs> saying, I'm a, I'm a bird. <laughs> and as far as those Chinese saying, oi, oi. <laughs> you still yet can't say Chevrolet. So, <laughs> oh, praise! Yeah, we gotta laugh. You, it, you, you have to laugh. It's so, it's so crazy. Our people, but the book says, uh, "My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge." For the lack of knowledge. All right. All right, Jerry, you got something? Uh, First Chronicles sixteen. Okay. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 16. Uh, let's start at verse 10. First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 10. It says, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the most high. 
Seek the Most High and His strength. And His seek what? And His strength. Yeah. Seek Go His ahead. Seek His face continually. Remember His marvelous works that He have done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. And so, who is He talking to? Verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. O ye seed of Israel, England. Mm. Israel, nah. Japan, Israel, America, Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So there mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, it is right. Boom. Now. That's Boom. It. We can we can drop the mic on that one. Drop the mic right there. Mic right there. He is our strength. That was a good one. I'm putting that. I'm highlighting that one. I ain't had that one highlighted. What they say? Iron sharp as iron, right? Oh, praise. With that being said, uh, tonight's tonight's lesson was strength. Now, and we testify that the Most High God is our strength, not man or machines or even ourselves. Most High God is our strength. With that being said, Israelite School of Kings and Priests, Kwame Asherala, uh, pray for the nation of Israel, and we also pray for the destruction of our enemies. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.